<laughs> Sorry, no. It sounds, <laughs> sounds awesome. It's not. But yeah. <laughs> and I will start by welcoming Jack, our prospective new trustee. And just remind everybody that at 7 o'clock on January 17th, we will have the joint select board trustee meeting at which I hope we will spend less than five minutes voting to make his trusteeship official. And remember I told you I couldn't be there. It's not until 7 o'clock. Okay. You said after 6.30. Okay. Because, okay. If that doesn't work, then please let me know. And no. I will go negotiate with... No, nope. it's really fine. Seven okay. o'clock works. And it will just be Zoom, and I will remind it's everybody in... January 17th, right? Yes. Okay. So, so to vote on his trusteeship, is that what it's called? On... I just made that up. So what to, will it... To vote to have Jack become a trustee until the town election. Interim trustee. And Susan offered to do the notes for today, and Joanne has offered to do them in February. Um, minutes. <coughs> So I sent those along. I know that uh, the revised director's goals are still forthcoming. I have physical notes on that that I will find. They're on my desk, um, but that's not at the top of my list right now. So the minutes I submitted were essentially, you know, I think those, those goals would be a part of, of them. So I don't know if that means we vote on them or not. Do we have a motion for the minutes of December 12th? Don't we have to wait till the goals are in one? That seems like a big part of the goals. I'm sorry, what's the question? A big part of the minutes is the goals, right? Like if we voted on them, I would think we would want to wait to make sure the goals are. We voted on the goals at the last meeting, so they're Jessica is going to incorporate changes that were made at that time. They are ancillary to the minutes. They are not integral to the minutes. Could we say that we're approving the minutes pending review of the revised director's goals document? Would that? I'm not even sure that's necessary because we have already voted on the goals. And this doesn't refer to the goals specifically. So I think we can just do it much more cleanly rather than insert contingencies because we agreed last time what the goals were going to be. So I think if we just have a motion to approve the minutes and a second, then we can go from there. I, I guess I'm, I'm not trying to be like problematic, but I I just wonder where the goals in writing exist voted on then. If they're not, like, I, I, I totally am I'm fine if, if I'm wrong, but they need to be in writing and approved somewhere. And I'm wondering where that is. If it's not. It is it's on my computer. I distributed them for the December meeting. A couple of changes were made. I made notes on my paper copy, and I passed that to Jess so she could incorporate them, and that hasn't quite happened yet. There's not, there's not any further discussion of the goals. Could we just defer this vote till next week, I mean, to next month? I mean, is there any harm in waiting to approve the minutes? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I mean, the minutes can get attached, or the goals can get attached when they're available, but they do not need further board action. Yeah, I mean, in the minutes it says, votes taken, number four, to accept director's goals as amended by Lynn, approved unanimously. 
So doesn't that indicate that the goals were yes. voted on and approved? I don't understand, Joanne, what your concern is. It's fine. Um, I, I move acceptance of the December 12th minutes. Seconded. I have one little correction. I think it w we should be that we convened at 7 p.m. rather than adjourned at 7 p.m. Okay. It's just incorporating that change. Does anyone else have any? Other th comments on the minutes? All in favor? Thank you. Was that, I didn't know, was that unanimous? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to note in the, where in the minutes there was the conversation about checking what the threshold was for having to issue an RFP. And I just wanted to let everybody know that that's $50,000, and we are nowhere near that. Um, since we do not have any public other than Jack, if you would like to say something, I would be happy to have him say something, um, or if you would like to say anything under the board vacancies topic. I would like in advance of the January 17th meeting to send a brief note to the select board. Um, I think I am correct in assuming that we all would support Jack as a new trustee and I would just sort of like to give them that information and a little bit of information about Jack and how he will be able to contribute to the board, specifically in terms of some of the leftover building issues, such as the roof and the solar and the installation of, we hope someday, um, charging stations and the like. And if you have any concerns about that or if you'd like to see what I write before, excuse me, beforehand, I would be happy to share it, but I am hoping that um, this makes the January 17th meeting go quickly, smoothly, and go on from there. So this would be a note that is from In, That the is from the board. trustees endorsing the candidacy of Jack Sikowski. So, Lynn, which position am I filling? It doesn't Alice matter. Or it doesn't other? matter because it will only be until the town election. Okay. Which is April or May? I think it's May. Okay. At that point, if you take out papers, mm -hmm. there will be two three-year positions and one two-year position. And you would choose at that time the position for which you would be a candidate. Okay. Director's report. Um, so the main thing that I was working on this month was the uh, was the budget for the coming fiscal year, and uh, I did submit that with my report for you to look at. I think um, we generally, the board generally votes to approve um, the budget. Uh, it has already been submitted to the town administrator, but I don't know that it's too late to make changes. Um, has everyone had a chance to see that? I have not. I, I oh. have it in my, I have, yeah. I, have, I have possession, but. Yeah. No, you don't have that, Joanne. That's not the budget. That's oh. some analysis of information in the budget. 
I just want to say real quickly, after Patrick distributed the draft <coughs> budget, um, I found just looking at columns of numbers to be kind of difficult to digest. So I threw all the numbers in a spreadsheet and calculated the percentage change. And then I also put it in a bar graph, which looks a whole lot prettier on my color monitor than it does off of the black and white printer I have. But the point is that we have experienced extraordinary growth since the library last had a normal year, which would have been our last year in the Goodwin, to the current year. But even between 22 and 23, we have had noticeable increases. Anyway, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, yeah and, and all of that is happening in the context of, you know, of staffing remaining relatively um, the same, you know, it hasn't, it has not in any way, shape or form kept up with that, that growth. So we are kind of under strain as, you know, as we usually are, uh, but it's becoming more pronounced. So we, we are asking for um, a budget that increases um, by about 9% this year, which is more than we would normally ask for. We usually try to keep it you know, close to whatever they have suggested. They actually didn't provide a guideline this year, which was somewhat, somewhat unusual. They will often say, keep your budget within 2%, 3%, whatever, you know, they come up, come up with. Um, and that's what we try to do. But even in this case, if they had given that guidance, we would still have to be requesting this extra, um, this extra funding because we just cannot keep up. Um, and so I feel like based on the, the you know, based on the statistics that we're going to present to them, it makes a, uh, a very solid argument that um, what we're asking for is is reasonable and um, actually fairly minimal. Um, and that was a nine percent increase of the budget. I, bel I believe it's about nine percent. Yeah, it's under ten percent, so it's nine nine point something. I believe. Yep. Um, so, d does anyone have any specific questions about items in the budget or? just want to sort of highlight one question that I had had. Their second line says part-time librarian salaries. That really is a misnomer because it does include, it is just all library staff other than the director. Yeah. And incorporates two full-time individuals. And, it, you know, at one time in the not that distant past, that actually literally was true that everyone that yeah. was here was part-time. But yeah, of course, that's no longer the case, and it probably should be. Related. Does this include the um, everyone else is in the union? So does mm -hmm. this include? I don't know. I don't know that Karen is because I think I think there may be some sort of a threshold with ours. Okay, yeah. but I'm just making sure. Like, I know they're are they still negotiating? Like, yeah, maybe but they don't. We have to go back to the that, table for more money at some point. That that's between the town and the. That's between the town and the and the union. You know, this is this assumes that they're they're being paid their current salary. That's and the if, question. Okay. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, at okay. the point when that is negotiated, then the town then will we'll say because it's going to go back gonna be across yeah. the board okay. for everyone that's in that union. I didn't know where they were in the negotiation. I, honestly, I don't either. But it's it's not <laughs> it's not it's not it's not done. Um, and that I think that's because they are waiting for the the pay study that they've commissioned to be completed, and that is also not done. So that's informing the latter. But I also think um, when I look at the program budget, right? I think it's I'm going to guess lower than when I left the board a long time ago, and that's to the kind of generosity of those paying for our programming and I think that's worth like a mention that like it is and that's we something we do have really great support absolutely. in programs and activities yeah. by our friends yep. which afford us to have yep. less of a uh, program budget which yep. I think is a great and that's something that I highlight in the in the little synopsis that I you know will yeah. provide to the finance committee yeah I just wanted to kind of yeah. set out loud no absolutely it's it's, it really is important and it, this is really um 
in, you know, this is the way it's supposed to work. That's, this right. is, it's working correctly that, um, that that's been taken off of our plate and they're, they're supporting that and, and uh, have a great system in place for doing so. Um, and, you know, the reason that we're even keeping anything in there is sort of more as like a, um, it's almost like we're, if we have to do like petty cash because someone says, I need, you know, quick, I need $50 for paper plates or something like that, that, that we have something. Um, but I am actually going to ask the friends uh, it, at the meeting next week that this year's contribution to, to programming and, and um, supportive things, the things that aren't just like a straight invoice, that they just give that money to us. I've already talked to the accountant and the treasurer about this, about just like, giving us the funding, like kind of like all at once, so that we can then just pay oh, bills nice. and draw, draw, you know, because it's it's kind of convoluted and complicated, and it's inconvenient for Sharon as well, because you know we're always saying, oh, yeah, we need that, right. you yeah. know, one hundred fifty bucks for you know whatever. It'd be a lot easier if it was just like any other expense, yeah. uh, and we were able to, and it also would make it easier for us to track it, you know, because it's just instead of like, oh, here's an envelope with a hundred bucks in it, and here's this will be a lot. That's exciting. This will be a lot better. Um, so is the program budget partially funded by friends or 100% funded? It, well, yeah, I mean, they're, the number that they're actually giving us is uh, for this Six, seven, year, $6,745. That's friends support. It's not strictly programming because there are some things that are, um, the friends are paying for, like museum passes and New York Times, New York Times that are obviously not programming. but. For the most part, it is for programming. So, do you want the minutes to reflect that the program budget is, just say, funded by friends? Well, there is four hundred dollars in the line, but it's it's primarily, pr primarily yeah. yeah. I yeah. think it's like a. Are there any questions about the budget or? Any additional comments? Do people feel comfortable voting on the budget, or would you wish to postpone? No, I think another nice thing that happened, too, is that the article came out about the town, and I think I sent it to you at some point. I don't remember, Lynn, if I did, about alignment of salaries. Yeah. That was a great article that came out in the Gazette. And I think really here. supports kind of, um, you know, your salary and the salary of the staff. Um, did you read it to us? Like, do you remember when it came out? It came out, <laughs> um, I, I think soon after we voted on Patrick's salary. It hmm. talked about, oh, when, oh it yeah. came out when the seniors, when they were talking about hiring the new the senior, senior center director. director. Yeah. And kind of bringing up the department head salaries and kind of aligning. So. It was kind of a nice, the fair living wage argument. It was, it was, yep. it was a good article, and I think it it supports us. Maybe we should pull it in case. Sure. Yeah, I'll look at that. I'll, I'll, if you want to look for it and send it to you. Yeah. Me. One thing I also wanted to say um, is, uh, that I wanted to point out is that um, you know our, we have there are a couple of like formula formula aspects of the budget that we have to meet for our certification with the Board of Library Commissioners. And one of one of the, um, the things that the MBLC is now allowing is for us to count certain pieces of equipment technology that is used, that is directly used by the public. So not staff computers and things like that, but you know, computers that are used by the public. Um, they're allowing those kinds of expenses to be used towards our materials expenditure, 10% of the amount that we are, you know, formulaically supposed to provide in materials, 10% of that can be from another source. So it can be from a capital request that we make to the town, which is something that I will plan to make this year to offset the, the uh, purchase of additional computers for public use, because we are seeing on a lot, many days where all of the computers are full. Uh, and so we're, we're now, you know, at the point where we should expand that so that we have computers, uh, uh, you know, adequate computers for adult and um, probably young adult use um, at all those uh, open carols, you know. So that's something that I'm planning to do um, and that 
uh, you know, allows the operating budget to be a little bit smaller because we're planning to do that. And it, even if we can't get a capital request through, we, you know, we do have other sources of funding like our uh, Charlotte Smith or um, state aid funds. So hopefully it's not a problem to do, to do that in the current year. I just sent it to you. Hmm? I sent it to everyone. I just sent the article. The article? Cool. Thank you. General under the roof. Sure. Do we, uh, so wait a minute, I'm sorry. Do, are we voting on the? Oh, I'm sorry. On the Do we have a motion? I make a motion to accept the budget as presented. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to make two other quick comments. One is that um, we did, you mentioned the other day, uh, Lynn, that you did not see Hadley on the state aid um, awards. The latest review went through, we are oh, okay. awarded and certified. Um, so our, there are normally two payments for state aid. Um, and the first award, it doesn't tell us what both of them will be, but the first award will be for $7,131.78. Um, which we probably will have by February or March. Can you give me that number again? Yep, 7,131 7, and 78 cents. And then the other thing I want, wanted to mention that was new since, um, since I wrote this and distributed it is that uh, Mike Spankable was here with, I, I'm not sure who it was, but someone to begin working on access hardware. I don't know. Wonderful. Yeah, I don't know about uh, you know <laughs> the the when it's activated, but you'll see in the, in the hallway that. that there <laughs> there's a little black box on the wall. I think the black box was already there, but is it is now lit up, so oh you gosh. see like it's lit blue, um, and it is <laughs> don't electrified. Lead us on. Huh? Yeah. Don't lead us on. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty exciting. Maybe they watched our our trustee meeting. <laughs> <on camp>. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Like I doubt it, but maybe. <laughs> Wishful thinking. Um, and that's pretty much it. I think that's, uh, those are the main things for this month. And then, yeah, of course, the roof, but I think that's its own item, is it not? Or? No, I didn't not. put it, I knew oh, it was in okay. yours, so okay. I didn't. Okay, well, so then I'll mention that. Um, so we, we did, uh, you know, I did put out additional requests for, um, for proposals to evaluate the roof from building envelope engineers and uh, we did get one from a company called Duca Criterium uh, who are in, I don't remember where they're, where they're from, Hopkinton. And so we now have three proposals ranging um, in cost from $4,325 to, at the lowest, that's Criterium, to um, Copeland in the middle at seven seven thousand, and Gale fifteen thousand one hundred, and yeah, I have, has everyone had a chance to to look at those? And I gotta be honest. I don't really know, like... I don't know how to compare these. Yeah. Yeah. I feel really out of, like, yeah. my league in just Like, the, it's so strange that the quotes are, like, so all over the place. Yeah. I don't yeah. know how to make a decision. Yeah, and I'm not even sure they're... How to even, yeah, compare them apples right. to apples. If they're apples. Like, <laughs> I feel like I need some sort of spreadsheet. Right, a rubric, like, right? Like, yeah, I mean, where they're all listed and then, like, final price, and then mm -hmm. what does that one offering to do, and that one, and, like... Yeah, I thought one of the, the things that was interesting <coughs> is that um, I believe the Criterium one, the one that most recently received one, and the one that is the least expensive also involves um, destructive testing where they will cut into the roof and and, um, and and look at what is below, if that's 
even necessary, which I thought was interesting because that, that's a lot more work than just going up and kind of poking around and visually inspecting it or. I don't think I was on the board yet when you sent out like the, the RFP, like what did we ask for? We went to, well, we went to um, ask Carolyn about this because again, we had questions about how do we follow procurement? What, and she just basically said, you know, just reach out to people so you did. didn't say what we were looking like yeah. did we send a letter specifically listing what we were I doing? sent out an, I sent an email with a synopsis of the situation essentially the email the email was the same it was just copy and paste so everyone that received it received the same initial email and then um, you know for the folk everyone that replied replied and they had specific questions and I just answered whatever questions that they that they asked and you know and tried to give essentially the same information the same story of what the you know what the deal is here um, so they're basically all dealing from the same set of facts oh yeah yeah I was just thinking like when in terms of like great like Susan said like comparing them mm -hmm. if there was like real definitive things listed in the letter going out like we, we would like this a project manager we would like this we would like this then it would help me kind of compare them do, do you see what I'm saying I do. But it wasn't a letter, was I, it? It was it, a phone It was call. an email. Okay. Uh, there was an okay. email, or, originally an email that went out because usually it was like, a, okay. sometimes it was, you know, I didn't know who I was addressing. It was just okay. like a blind email to, to a company. Okay. Um, and I guess, you know, the way I look at it is that we're, we're looking to get advice. We're not necessarily looking to get drawings or I think we're trying to get an evaluation of like what is, what is there, and then deciding what do we need to do next. I don't think any of these proposals involves them giving us documents at the end of the day that are ready to be handed to a builder or a, a roofer. This is really just someone to come and say, this roof is adequate as, as we find it, or no, it's not, and um, this is why, and these are the these are the things that we would recommend. And then we would go to those next steps of like having a new roof design if someone said you need a new roof. It seems the challenge is that we're, we're trying to hire a consultant to advise us on something and we need someone to advise us on how to hire the consultant to do that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I don't know how to make, yeah. I don't know. And I feel like Gail was the company that Mark Dunn really spoke highly of, right? Well, he, it is the company that the university uses. So when I contacted him at the initial whatever, I said, do you know anyone? And he said, this is who the university uses. Okay. He, d he had no criticism of their services vis-a-vis -vis the university, and he thought they provided excellent advice. Is there a way that you can evaluate the companies? Do you have any sense of their reputation? Also, I'm not sure what I can just say in one. these yeah. meetings. Oh, you're just, welcome to so, just talk. Okay, just all right. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I sometimes wonder what your husband does in trying to figure out these decisions of sort of who is the best of the bunch mm -hmm. based on their reputation. Is it, you know, the university trusts Gail and Mark Dunn has good things to say or are there other ways you can measure what company is the best of the bunch? I am not entirely sure if... I'm wondering if dividing up maybe a research task among us and like each of us, like if we like look at the website, <laughs> you know, like, like I feel like there's like, we should 
maybe do a little homework, but I, I don't, because I wasn't here when it's sent out, I'm not 100% sure of the task, I'm not sure what that homework completely should be, but I feel like. What do you, what are the, I mean, I will be, I will be happy to work on this and collect information. What do you think would be persuasive or informative or how many people work with the company? How many, how long they have been in business? Who their clients are? Who they show on their website as satisfied clients? What? References. Well, I think references are something that you would ask of each individual one if you were considering hiring them. I don't know that you... You know, a list of some of their clients. But we what? are considering. So why wouldn't we ask for it? Like we're considering hiring one of the three. So like you would, like as in the art. But I thought you were suggesting begin with do some kind of initial review and then come to some conclusions. And then at that point, it would make sense to me to seek references. references. Well, but if we only have three, I think if we had a larger pool, it might make sense to screen down the pool, but with a pool of only three. I also think, you know, there's something to be said for the fact that, you know, I, th yeah, we can do a little due diligence and, and look for, you know, reviews and, and commentary on, on these um, individually to make sure that there aren't any like red flags that come up. We could also ask someone to, you know, give us a quick, you know, have them on a Zoom call and just talk about the services and just say, we, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't, we're, this is not our world, but we are, you know, responsible for the building. So, you know, walk us, walk us through it, walk us through your proposal and what you intend to do. Um, but I also don't, I just think that the, you know, I don't think we should um, get totally bogged down. I also don't think we're in a rush because we're not, no one's going on that roof probably until, mm -hmm. it, what, March, April, you know, unless we have like some quick thaw and then it doesn't snow again, like when we had the roofers go up there to kind of do this previously, we had like a window of opportunity where just unexpectedly there was no snow on the roof and we said, let's just get somebody up there and if we don't do it now, then we're gonna have to wait who knows how long. But that's not the case right now, there's a foot of snow on the roof. So I think we're, we're we have the luxury of, of a little time to, dis to decide this, but I also think, you know, this is not like a, an incredibly complex roof and, and project. So I think, you know, maybe just sort of ascertaining that these people's credentials are good and, um, and, and maybe it does come down to, you know, the right price. I, don't, I just don't think that the scope of work for any of this is going to be that different in what Gale or Copeland work criteria. Honestly, like when I read them, and I don't mean to be cheap, but the criterion one was like the most well, like it was the most least expensive, but yeah, it was spelled out clearly. And like, to me, it was the easiest to understand, to read. Mm -hmm. It didn't make rocket science of it. <laughs> it mm -hmm. We're gonna come here, we're gonna evaluate a roof, we're gonna take this piece off, we're gonna bring up, what did they bring up? Forklift or whatever they're bringing. And, and they're going to tell us what they think, which yeah. seems like what we need. For. So the Look other thing, the other thing that um, <laughs> that comes to mind here is that in in order for them to really do the work, and I think I'm not sure which one it was. I actually think it was the Criterion uh, proposal. Or, I don't know. One of them mentioned the fact that they are going to want to see the kind of like the daily logs, the job reports that were submitted um, by oh my gosh, what was his name? Who was here working for Mark Sullivan, yeah. the clerk of the works? who was here and had all the photographs and all of the records of meetings and what was discussed and when it was discussed. So that you know, pivot point where we went from having a, expecting to have a metal roof to then having to have a, a shingle roof, you, they're going to want to look at that, that record to see what the thought process was, what re-engineering was done or wasn't done. And so um, we're going to have to be in touch with Mark Sullivan. So we and explain what we're doing, why we're doing it, 
he still has kind of a connection reputationally to this project. Well, maybe he would. And he might be able to help us if we pass these names That's and say, you know, what do you think of these? Do you have, do you have any concerns about, about these folks? Or oh, maybe he'll say he knows nothing about it, but maybe he'll be able to help us vet it. No, I think he would, because yeah. they actually just built the Greenfield Library. They yeah. weren't the project managers. They built, like, so they're, yeah. I mean, they mm -hmm. are building, Yeah. they do some big, you know, they do a lot sure. of, well, they yeah, don't, yeah. I don't think they do Eagle Book anymore, but they might be back. But so they do big commercial buildings. Yeah. So I think that's actually a really good idea. I think, Yeah. I don't want to say he owes it to us, because that sounds yeah. like, it's but I almost honor. feel like a professional yeah. Yeah, courtesy a, given. Right. absolutely. Right, and we are going to have to go to him, you know, with some, for for the sake of looking at records and, and digging that stuff up. Um, Who was Mark Sullivan? He was the he was the uh, the owner's project manager okay. for this for this building. I like that idea because yeah. I do feel like. Well, and I also I said to to Lynn um, as we were kind of like coming up with the, with the plan of, um, of attack here. And now that we're kind of not looking at issues of you know, recourse or, or whatever, um, there's really no reason to not be in open, just fully open communication when we have a question going to Mark or Phil and saying, look, we just want to move forward with this and help us where you can. You know, even if that entails sending us a bill, you know, but hopefully it doesn't. Do you still have a good working relationship with Phil? Yeah. Yeah, and we yeah. just making sure. Yeah, absolutely. Who's yeah, I mean, Phil? he actually requested some statistics, statistics for me yeah. for something that he was working on. I don't remember. It was something actually. It was actually the numbers that I sent to you that came together because it was prompted by a question from him on something, and I said, "All right, I've now had two people asking me for this. I'm going to put it together and share it." So yeah, I mean, it's, there's still a back and forth. It's yeah. infrequent, but it's fun. Yeah, I, I can't stay too much longer, so thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't, I don't know if we have to, I mean, I, I'm really in favor of before anybody does any work, go into Mark and mm -hmm. Phil first. Agreed. Well, that's fine. I'm, no, I, I was not thinking from the conversation that there was going to be a vote. And and he may have other ideas. He may have like, oh, call this guy. Right, yeah, right, him, and then we can so start so doing our board work later yeah. if he has like some like, oh, I think you should research this. Or, okay. But I think they're a great first stop. I agree. Nope, that's a good idea. So go to Mark Sullivan first. Yes. And Phil, please. Or just one. I'm just, for now, I would just go to Mark yeah. and just get his advice and then, you know, because he, he, that's sort of his job. That's. E.A. Sullivan also was the construction group that built the new Newman Center. At oh, UMass. that's right. I was on that board. So it was very interesting to see him in a different relationship. Um, and he did quite a good job. Good. Okay. Um, Joanne, do you want to do a strategic plan update? I just want to say that we're holding off till February. I came in and met with the library staff. Um, everybody involved felt like no, like no groups were meeting in December. People really, I thought I'd get more momentum in December than I was able to. So we're on track for um, February. I just looked, I didn't write it into this calendar what date I have. So I will forward to the board what that date is as soon as I. So tomorrow's date is it. not in existence. Correct. And it's moved. And it's February. not been advertised anywhere. So okay. we don't have to worry about like a, anything um, like that. Was it the same February date that was on the original? Yes, schedule? I just don't have it with me. Um, I must have written it. Might be it's the 28th. 28th. Okay. Um, What's happening on the 28th? A strategic planning meeting. Our first one, yeah. Thank you, Jess. Are there any other urgent Please. items? Because I'm going to break our quorum when I leave. <laughs> well, is there any other business? Yeah. Is there anything else we need to vote on? I don't think there's anything else we need to do. At least not on my agenda. If anybody yeah, else. Yeah, we went through the agenda. Joanne, is that 128 or 228? Which day? 228. Okay. 228. Thank you. So Wednesday, I think. Is that mm -hmm. Yeah. Are they all Wednesdays? 
Mm -hmm. I think so. Because we reserved this room for open night. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? I will make that motion to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Second. All in favor? Yes. Okay.